Hello everybody and welcome back to the Ant Holofer YouTube channel this week. The member lamp is purple chosen by Jazz P. Thank you. And today we are talking about the new Wakushi Pot. Now as you can see I have a few versions here on the table. Now these ones right here, these are two old versions, some old prototypes. We're not going to be focusing on them. What we are going to be focusing on is these two. These are the new Wakushi pots that you can now order from Wakushi's website. So in this video, we're going to talk about a few things. First of all, how to set up these Wakushi pots, then how to move a colony in, then how to expand on the setup, and finally, my thoughts about these pots, both from the old generation to the new generation, and just things that may change over time. And for those who are interested in some timestamps, there is also some timestamps down below, because I know some of you are just here to hear one specific thing. So hopefully, the timestamps help with that. This is Wakushi's first retail leaf cutter pot. This pot is however not meant for everyone. This pot is ambient heated, meaning they belong in a room that is heated to the correct temperature and not ideal to be directly heated. This can still be done, but it's not ideal for these versions. Wakushi is working on a whole range of pots which will include heated versions as well as larger pots and accessories. With that being said, let's look at the setting up of the pots. When you firstly get a new pot, there's a few things to do first. A leaf cutter colony needs an insanely high humidity, and these pots are at the moment really dry. Therefore, you need to hydrate them a lot in the beginning. Now, the way you hydrate these pots is through the small hydration chamber on the side. What this does is basically it wettens the gypsum within, creating a more humid area. Now, as these pots are dry when you firstly receive them, you need to fill up these chambers a few times over the first few days, as the gypsum is all dry, and we don't want all dry for these insanely high needing humidity colonies. So therefore, you need to fill the hydration chamber quite a few times to make sure that the humidity stays above 90%. Saying that, how can you see how high the humidity is? Well, with a humidity sensor. You of course also get a humidity sensor with the pot. The sensor simply screws into place in the top and from there it can either work standalone or connected to the app called Xiaomi Home. Now this app can be a little bit confusing to navigate at first, but in here you can see the temperature, the humidity, together with setting up alarms if things are too hot, too cold or too dry. The sensor can also be turned towards you, towards me, or by unscrewing these eight screws, you can turn the entire lid around to make it face just the way that you'd like. An additional thermostat pro cap can also be placed in the entrance port to allow a pro to get into the pot and get accurate readings. With the sensor in place and the humidity on top, you're ready to get the ants inside. Now these pots have one entry port. This can either be closed off or connected to another pot or other products. Inside the pot you may have seen the 3D printed mesh. This is to keep the fungi above the gypsum, as wet gypsum and fungi isn't a good combination. The ants can also go down in the mesh and use it as a way under the fungi. Now additionally, this mesh also raises the fungi, letting air able to get in under ventilating the fungi. This makes the fungi survive a bit longer, as it has a bit more air compared to if it was just flat on the plaster. And as it is lifted, the workers can also go in and remove old dead fungi, rather than it just smothering up. If the lid is too small to get the fungus inside the container, the whole top of the lid can simply be removed using an alloy key that comes with the pot. Simply unscrew the top screws and replace when the fungi is inside once more. Moving the ants in the fungi is usually a pretty simple task. How it goes is, though quite different from person to person, and from lock to unlucky. But in theory, it's quite simple. Simply place the closed fungi container that they arrive in on its side inside the pot, then remove the lid. The fungi is usually broken up to small pieces during shipping, but as days go by, the ants will simply rebuild the fungi from the broken bits. After a few days, you can then remove the container that they came in, and if they are still inside, gently tip any fungus out of it and remove it. 
and now you're all set to watch your colony grow bigger. Now don't worry if the ants don't cut straight away, as they can be a little bit stressed out from the shipping and be more focused on rebuilding their fungi. All you now have to do is regularly fill up the water compartment around once a week and the pot will stay humid. But if the gypsum still looks dry, you can try adding a little bit more water in the hydration chamber and see if all the water gets soaked up. If it does, wait around 30 minutes and try to refill it once more if everything still looks a bit dry and dusty. If everything starts to look wet or if you have a little bit of leftover water in the hydration chamber, the plaza is full and there's nothing more you can do, everything should be perfect. As this is an all-in-one pot, you simply feed the ants inside and watch them go crazy. As the colony slowly grows, it'll get harder and harder to feed the ants and they may want to explore outside. Once you feel it's too hard to feed them, you need to think about expanding their setup. So now it is officially expansion time. Now you have two ways of going it. You can either buy the same size pot once more or you can buy a bigger size pot. What Wakushi originally thought was to upgrade the pot size and relocate the fungi. This way the fungi chamber will slowly grow as you expand. For those on a budget you can however also simply just upgrade to a second pot with the same size and use that as a feeding pot. The two pots simply connect together using a 24mm tubing or if you have more than two pots you can simply connect them using a multi-tube connection adapter like this three-way one right here. And finally, my final thoughts. As one of the testers who originally used this first prototype pot, I can say the new pots are a massive improvement. I personally had a problem with overwatering the setup and the sensor simply just stopping. As Wakushi have changed from this old sensor to this new type, this new one works a lot better and doesn't stop like this old one. Together with that, the new hydration from beneath is simply impossible, with normal logic at least, to overwater. As the old tube came from the top, it was able to let gravity push the water from beneath the gypsum up, flooding the entire pot. But with the new system, this isn't possible. Finally, there is the new lid. Now on the old pot you simply took the entire lid off. In the new pots you have this little small lid that you can open and go in and feed the leaves. This makes it easy to get the leaves in and out, but also making it a lot harder for the ants to escape. These new pots are also just a little bit taller, meaning the ants have to travel further to get out and also allowing the fungi to grow a bit higher before hitting the top. Now I'm personally super happy with how these new pots are. I haven't had any issues and to be honest, these leafcutter colonies are maybe one of the easiest species to take care of now. I literally put zero effort into them. I just drop in some leaves, water the hydration and then I forget about them. I just see how cool they are. For such a special species, I'd say these pots do their job insanely well and making keeping leafcutter ants so easy. Now finally, if you have any questions towards these pots, Wakushi have now launched a Discord server where he will be sitting in there and helping answering your questions. So if you have any questions about keeping the leaf cutters, maybe what leaves they need, well you can go to the Wakushi Discord server and there will be a channel for the leaf cutter department only. And with that all out of the way, let's get the members up here. Thank you to all the members, it's insane man, god damn. Thank you all, it's an insane list. But a special thank you to my three family members. A big thank you to Ryan from the YouTube channel Anscapes, together with Medical Car Case number 9, and lastly, Ants Norway. Thank you all for being family members, and a massive thank you to all the Hall for Helpers. Now, are you keeping leaf cutters? Would you like to keep leaf cutters? Have you waited for these pots to just try leaf cutters? I was so scared when I was gonna get leaf cutters, but these pots have made this so easy it's hard to say because i literally get so much joy out of them and i just feed them leaves and hydrate now when i initially wanted to go into will keeping leaf cutters i was insanely scared because there were so many people saying it's hard be careful i don't feel like it's that hard at the moment because these jobs do their job so well so with that being said don't forget to like and subscribe become a member today if you like and i will see you all I don't know what I'm doing with my hands. In another video. Bye!